I have no idea what I look like right now. Hope I don't look like I haven't slept for three days. But um, this little goldenrod meadow should be a great place for the Argiope spiders, which are incredible orb weavers. They're real large for, you know, up north. Not as big as Nephila, but they are incredible. So we gotta look for one. How you guys doing? I'm Chris Ignato, and you are watching Nature Now. So I just found a banded Argiope spider. I expected to find some black and yellow Argiopes in this goldenrod meadow, and so far, I, I haven't found any yet. But I'm really excited about these, these banded Argiopes. They also have other names, banded garden spiders, and I'm sure depending on what locale you're in, there's probably some kind of name for them. Some people might call these banana spiders, but honestly, a banana spider is not even in the United States. But people also often call Nephila spiders banana spiders, and that's often due to the shape of their abdomens or their coloration. A lot of them can have a lot of yellow on them. So I'm going to see if I can handle this, this spider just so I can show you you know, a little bit more up close and personal footage and also demonstrate the fact that they're not aggressive spiders whatsoever. So before I handle the spider, I have to once again stress to you, I do not recommend or suggest anybody handle wild animals. You know, um, it stresses the animal out, which is not fair. You know, it's kind of inappropriate to be honest. And not only do you kind of put the animal in danger, but you also put yourself at risk. You never know what type of reaction you're gonna receive from a bite or sting or anything from one of these. Some creatures like caterpillars, you handle them and just contact dermatitis might occur. Again, I've been doing this since I was a child. I'm kind of paid to work with wildlife. Awesome job. And not only that, throughout all the years and concerning the fact that I'm kind of paid for it, kind of makes me professional. Hmm, kind of cool. The lighting's not gonna be the best. I'm gonna have a really harsh shadow on one side of my face and bright white in the other side. But those are contrasting colors. Aposematic coloration. Am I poisonous or venomous? I'm a Scorpio. So the banded Archiope has a rather shiny reflective abdomen. It's very silvery. As you can see, she's not being aggressive. Argiopes are in a group of spiders called orb weavers. They make those great wagon wheel shaped webs that sometimes look like a broken pane of glass. And being orb weavers, they're very docile. You know, I'm sure there's, there's always somebody that'll disagree and say that these things are aggressive, but let me tell you right now, they very rarely bite, and that's even if provoked. It's still a rare occasion that you get bit. But there might always be an exception, and like I said, there's always somebody that wants to argue with that. Now, let's say you actually do receive a rare bite from one of these banded Archiopes. It could actually be pretty painful. Um, a lot like a wasp sting, maybe a little bit worse. The black and yellow Archiopes are almost as equally, you know, painful, but not quite as much as the, the banded Archiope. Everybody's different, however. You know, some people might not hurt much at all, and then of course there are those who receive a more painful bite due to biology and individual chemistry and whatnot. In some cases, you might receive a secondary bacterial infection introduced into the wound, say from scratching or something, around the bite. Our bodies are covered with bacteria, and we're also covered with staph bacteria. You introduce that into a wound and well, you know, that can have complications. Other than those rare complications though, the bite from a banded Argiope is considered medically insignificant, meaning the fact that after a little bit of pain, maybe for a few hours, you'll be good to go and be able to move on with your life. Hopefully the spider also. Like all spiders, with maybe the exception of uh, one or two species outside the United States, they are carnivores, meaning they like to eat meat. And these Argiope spiders, their main food of preference are grasshoppers. 
mostly because the spiders are quite large and a grasshopper provides a decent meal. But they'll go for wasps, bees, and of course butterflies and moths and whatnot. Again, they really like them grasshoppers. So that being said, they could be the gardener's best friend. And our guide bee's main tool of the trade, of course, are those large webs. There are a lot of non-sticky strands of silk within those webs, but some of the strands are covered with a sticky glue every so many millimeters or so. So a flying insect or a grasshopper comes into contact with that glue. Good luck escaping. The spider will rush over and quickly enshroud its prey with hundreds of strands of silk kind of becoming a uh, sleeping bag. A sleeping bag of doom. Then the spider will deliver a bite, a very dangerous bite for the insect, because that bite is not only a neurotoxin, but it's also a necrotoxin. That means it kills off tissue cells. It begins to digest the, the insect from the inside out. Then of course the spider can either tuck it off to the side or begin feeding right then and there. So, as I said, I don't recommend you do this. And I'm not really doing this so I can get a ton of views. I'm really, my main interest with my channel, as with all my videos, is to educate you, to show you how beautiful these creatures are and how often it's very unnecessary to harm one of these things. They have a somewhat live and let live attitude, unless of course they're hunting. They don't need to be killed. They're not aggressive without giving a good reason. Oh my God, this is so hard. You have to be a contortionist if you want to film wildlife. She's attempting to throw out silk right now to uh, hopefully catch the breeze and then, you know, climb away. She'd be doing that whether she's on me, an animal, or on a tree branch. Although, you know, most wildlife doesn't love being handled. She's actually anchored a, a big deposit of silk to my watch, an anchor point. And uh, it's really cool. I wish I could... Oh, she fell. So much for that anchor. Going up the shorts again. No underwear underneath. Look at all that silk. It's mid-October right now, which is prime time for finding these banded Archaeopi spiders. Often the black and yellow Archaeopis are a bit more common in, say, September, maybe the end of August, and of course early October. But October is really the, the best time to find these banded Archaeopis. And just like their relatives, they love these goldenrod meadows. It's a great place for catching insects, um, especially those grasshoppers, and sometimes even the butterflies and moths. This is pretty much as big as the spider gets. The relative black and yellow archaeopy gets just a little bit bigger, but as I said, this is pretty much how big the banded archaeopy gets. Down south, you might have larger spiders, but if you're having a black and yellow archaeopies, or in this case, the banded archaeopies, they're not gonna be much bigger than this. Everyone's gonna tell you, oh, you know, they're like five, six inches where I am. But you ever talk to a fisherman? That's all I gotta say about that. Okay, so get this. Black and yellow archaeopies, or in this case here, banded archaeopies, often have a concentrated patch of silk in the center of their webs called a stable omentum. That stable omentum, like the name suggests, probably helps provide structural integrity and stability to the web. But those stable omentums have also been found to reflect high quantities of ultraviolet light which might be there to entice some of their prey items like moths or butterflies, right? Um, or, like their favorite food supply, grasshoppers. I also have a theory that that stable momentum might actually show birds that there's a web there and thus preventing the bird from accidentally flying through the center of the web and destroying all the spider's hard work. Those stable omentums are also responsible for some of the spider's other nicknames, 
like the zigzag spider, the zipper spider, or my favorite, the writing spider. Folklore has it that if you whisper a name to the spider, it'll write that name in their web, kind of like Charlotte, right? But this story has a dark side. The person who owns that name will end up passing away. They will perish. Another story has it that if you smile or show your teeth to the spider, again, it'll write your name in their web and ultimately you end up passing away. But those are just rumors. They're stories. They're folklore. They're not true. Or are they? Maybe those folk tales are further encouraged by the rather skull-like appearance of their carapace. A cool thing I learned not all that long ago is these spiders will all strategically place their webs facing the optimal position to get the most sunlight at this time of year. Being October, these nights and sometimes the days can be a little bit cold, so maximizing that exposure to sunlight is really good for thermal regulation, which means helps them to keep warm. Okay, so this spider's been more than cooperative. I'm going to actually release her back on her web and she'll actually go right back to it as if nothing ever happened. Maybe she'll run and hide. We'll see. Gorgeous species. And there you go, she happily returned to her web. You know, wild things prefer to be left alone. I'm only doing this so I can educate you guys that they're not out to get you. You know, it's a big scary looking spider with aposomatic coloration, yet did I get bit? That's a negative. I took her from her home, showed you guys, you know, a little bit about her, still did not get bit. But don't do this. As I said, I'm a professional. Banded Argiope spider. What a beautiful species. I find the black and yellow Argiopes to be just a little bit prettier, but I don't know. The beautiful iridescent silvery sheen to the exoskeleton on this species might move it up into my first place for beautiful orb weavers. Anyhow, I want to thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you actually enjoy these spiders. I hope you learned a couple of things, and if you ever see one of these, why not take a look you know, closer look, appreciate it, and don't give the spider any harm because just like everything else in our ecosystem, they deserve to live and they're a very important member of the ecosystem. Once again, I'm Chris Ignato, signing out. Funny thing, I was just talking to some people about the Archaeopis and I was telling them that in my previous video on the black and yellow Archaeope, I've got hundreds, actually I have thousands of comments, but I have hundreds of comments of people, not unlike myself, seven years old in Ontario, running through goldenrod meadows, only to find themselves to the horror of being covered in these Archaeope spiders, crawling up their bodies, on their faces. Oh yeah, and I just got a comment recently from a person on a motorcycle who is, you know, racing along on the trail had a couple spiders on them and one of them was in their helmet. Needless to say, they freaked out. Good story.